Hi and welcome back to the channel. My name is Adam from AZ Tech and today we have the overclocking and the overclocking results and benchmarks that we did for the budget and gaming PC build. Uh, right away we're going to start off the bat with the CPU-Z results. So we're going to go ahead and open this up. This is going to show us our overclocking results on the CPU. And here we got the Xeon X5460 and the code name for that is Harpertown and it's showing the socket 771 and it's a 45 nanometer process so this is an older CPU uh, a lot of people don't know that this older Xeon is actually a real real good value for the money but alright the overclocking results we ended up with almost 4.2 gigahertz I couldn't quite get it there it needed more voltage to hit that 4.2 it's really really close but uh, in the BIOS I ended up setting it to 1.325. It's shown a little bit less here because we're at idle but once it starts ramping up its power it'll boost up to 1.325 volts and it does a almost 4.2 gigahertz overclock. It, we achieved it by doing a multiplier of 9.5 which is its max multiplier and that ends up boosting the front side bus up to 1760 megahertz so it actually did very very well uh, I wanted to be able to go a little higher but the voltage got a little bit out of control and then once I would bump the voltage up then the CPU cooler couldn't quite keep up so I'm actually very happy with the overclocking results on the Xeon I'm gonna show you the GTX 1060 I ended up hitting a pretty decent overclock on that as well so we're gonna go ahead we'll open up the EVGA Precision X software Now this program takes a little bit longer to open up and we actually hit pretty good overclock results on this as well and once again super super happy with the GTX 1060 here. Alright so we loaded it right up here as you can tell I, I bumped up my power target as far as I could possibly go and basically what that does is it allows it to use all of its available power and that 8 pin really really helps itself out with the SSC model you get the 8 pin power instead of the 6 pin which allows you to to draw more wattage so we also bumped up the temperature target so that it wouldn't be affected by any temperature uh, I ended up having to ramp up the fan speed over here about 70 percent which adds a lot of noise but it also helps keep the temperatures down as well and we achieved a plus 90 megahertz uh, offset on the GPU clock and a plus 680 megahertz on the memory and it's gonna allow itself to boost up to 2100 megahertz while gaming and it does once it starts using its full power and it's at hundred percent load it'll bump right up to 21 2100 megahertz very happy with that and the memory clock as well it boosted quite a bit higher than stock speed so with the higher memory clock and the higher GPU clock we're definitely able to get its full potential out of this. Now as you can tell I did have to bump up the voltage all the way. Uh, it didn't really affect it just going all the way up there. As long as I could keep the temperatures in check it handled it rather well. Yeah so once again just very very happy with the overclocking results here on the GTX 1060. The EVGA SSC model was a great choice. I, I really like it and we're gonna show you some of the gaming benchmarks that we have here and I think you're actually going to be rather surprised on some of the results we get. I'm going to be doing 1080p testing along with 4K testing. So, alright, let's uh, roll those benchmarks.
All right, so we got done with the benchmarks there, and as you can tell, it, it did very, very well. Um, the 1080p results were a little bit underwhelming. It kind of seemed like as soon as the GTX 1060 started stretching its legs out, the CPU became the bottleneck, and it kind of slowed itself down with the CPU. The CPU couldn't quite keep up once we really unleashed the power of that 1060 in there. Um, but the 4K results were a little bit different. Once the graphics card started kind of stumbling on itself and that, that became the bottleneck, then the CPU was able to keep up. So it showed very admirable uh, 4K results. A lot of people don't realize, but when they get on their console on PS4, a lot of the games are only running at 30 frames a second. Um, if you were to pick up a PS PS4 Pro, which is the 4K version of the PS4, and virtually any game on there is going to be running at 4K resolution at 30 frames a second. So for this, you know, PC that was, you know, right around the four to $500 mark, we were able to achieve very admirable results on 4K. I was hitting playable frame rates on Rise of the Tomb Raider there, as you could tell, along with the, uh, the crew. The crew is actually a very demanding CPU-oriented game because of the open world aspect of it. And we were hitting above 30 frames a second on that, almost near 40. So once again, once you, when you get into the PC gaming, a lot of people want that 60 frames a second. But to hit 4K 60 frames a second is going to need a a <laughs> pretty expensive you know gaming rig. So yeah, well over a thousand dollar build to be able to achieve those results. I mean, you're you're looking close to more like 1,500 bucks you'd have to spend. To be hitting that constant 60 frames a second at 4k so as long as i was above 30 frames a second on say medium settings like we did on a lot of those games most of those games 4k was set at medium settings some games i could go up to the high or ultra setting but only on older titles could i do that in my opinion if you were to run medium settings in 4k it it's a much more pleasurable experience with the game than running a a game at 1080p ultra settings. I just I prefer the 4K resolution, the crispiness that you get with the details and everything. And dropping those settings down to medium doesn't seem to affect it as much as what a lot of people may think. That'll uh, do it for the video here. I definitely was very happy on the results, and I don't think I would change a whole heck of a lot on the way I built the system. I, I like the results that I got out of it, and it kept it at a pretty low budget, and it's allowing me to do everything I need to do. I, I got my gaming that I can do on it in 4K and also I have my my editing so with the YouTube video so I definitely like it for for both of those things and I'm very happy with the results. Alright guys until next time take care.